In this video, we're going to get access to Google Bard, run a quick demo of what it can do, talk about the features it has, and go through some serious problems that Google Bard currently faces, and also cover a number of limitations compared to ChatGPT and Bing Copilot that Google Bard seems to have as of right now. Let's talk about it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. If you don't already have access to Google Bard, you can do so by joining the waitlist on bard.google.com. Click on Join Waitlist, and you can get added to the waitlist by entering your email address and signing in. Now, it's important to note that Google Bard only works with personal accounts and not workspace accounts. You also have to be 18 or over to use it, and it only works from the US or UK, so you either are located there or you can use a VPN connection to access Google Bard. It takes about a few hours to a week almost to get access to Google Bard, and then you can use it right away. Once you log in for the first time to Google Bard, you will have to accept your terms and conditions, amongst which is please do not provide or include information that can be used to identify you or others in your Bard conversations. On the home screen for the first time, we see the notification that Bard is an experiment. It also doesn't always get it right and that it improves with our feedback. Got it. The home screen seems pretty straightforward and simple. On the left-hand side, we can reset the chat, look at our activity, FAQs, help and support. At the bottom is the typical chat prompt, but it also has a microphone icon, which definitely makes it convenient to record instead of having to type our questions. And at the very bottom, it says, Bard may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. I guess that makes sense because it is in the experimental phases, so it's gonna make mistakes. That's to be expected. Now let's test our first use case. Tell me the price of Bitcoin today. Well, that was convenient, not having to type. It's doing the animation and we have our answer. So that proves an important point that it is connected to the internet and we can get live responses. It's not restricted like ChatGPT to September 2021. It also has the option of taking it further by Googling it and going to a typical search engine and it does provide drafts for you. So right off the bat, it provides three drafts for you you can pick from. This would be normally used in cases where you have essays or different types of documents that would require more detail perhaps. But in our case, this is sufficient. So far, so good. It provided the answer concisely and on time and it seems to be accurate. However, here's the thing. Google Bard has a serious problem with hallucinating. It provides inaccurate information that has nothing to do with what you asked it for. Let's try a quick test. Tell me about this car. Now, of course, there is actually no car. It's just a random phrase asking about this car, but there is no car. And that's the problem. See, it's providing some details about a 2023 Ford F-150. I didn't ask about that. I just asked about this car. It should respond with saying, what car are you referring to? Do you want to know about cars or a car in typical or something like that? But it's just randomly providing information that has nothing to do with what I asked for. Let's try another test. Try this. It's just a simple phrase. There's nothing to try. Let's see what it comes back with. Sure, here's a poem about a car, but I didn't ask for a poem. It has nothing to do with what I queried it about. In fact, it should come back with asking for more details or more information so it can provide a response that is based on my need. So this is a serious problem with Google Bard. With typical questions that are dealing with facts, it might provide something, but as soon as you throw something new at it, it just goes crazy, really. Here's another problem with Google Bard. Let's try multimodal testing. Is Google Bard multimodal? Yes, Google Bard is multimodal. So technically it's saying it can ingest text, speech, and images. This means that it can take information from multiple sources and use it to generate more comprehensive informative responses. So the problem is that it's claiming you can ask Bard a question about a picture and it can use the text of the question, the image itself, and any other information it can find online to give you a more complete answer. So it is claiming to ingest images as well. The thing is though, it doesn't really do that. It does it so terribly that it completely becomes useless. I'll use an example image and ask what this is, and let's see what it comes back with. So give it the link and ask what this image is about. The image shows a young woman sitting on a bench in a park. She's wearing a blue dress and white hat, and is what, what in the world is it talking about? I think Google Bard is high in its own supply. I mean, come on, it's a Lamborghini, and it's like out of nowhere bringing up some weird photo or some description of something that has nothing to do with the image. Now, in case you're wondering, the image has nothing to do with people at all. In fact, there's no people in the image whatsoever. It's a car in a forest, a pretty cool looking car, I gotta say, but it has nothing to do with people. In fact, the other images on the page are also about cars and not people. So not sure what's going on there or why I made that mistake, but it is a pretty terrible answer. Let's go ahead and do a final test and see what it gives. We'll do a coding question that I've done with ChatGPT in the past. So here we'll go ahead and write, so write, code 
for me to allow access to my API service, write it in Python. There we go, let's see what it does. Okay, so it's provided the code. Let's go ahead and do a quick test to see if it can secure this code, which is something that other software similar to ChatGPT does for you. We'll go ahead and protect the code you provided against the OWASP top 10. Let's see if you can do that for us. So that's a little limited. It's just providing a description of what you can protect against, but it doesn't really do it for you. I wonder if there is a different way to finagle it to do that for you. We'll go with something. Okay, now protect the API code you provided against the OWASP top 10. Let's see if you can actually do something with that code. Okay, so it did provide the code with slight improvements. It seems a little underwhelming, but if we look at the description, it says this code snippet uses prepared statements to prevent SQL injection. It also uses a database to store user data, which can be more secure than storing data in code. Well, that is a little underwhelming for sure compared to ChatGPT and the other video linked in the description. It actually went ahead and made major changes in the code, which were really nice, and it covered a different areas and did explain it too. So overall, it does do code to some limited extent. And a disclaimer for Google, I guess, is that if we go to the FAQ, and if you ask it, can Bard help with coding, it does say Bard can't help you with coding just yet. Bard is still learning to code, and responses about code aren't officially supported for now. Now for the verdict. Well, unfortunately, it's really terrible. I got to say, man, it's, it's not even in any way good. However, here's the thing, though. It's great if it came out six months ago, but because now we have a measuring stick or sort of a standard to measure it against, such as ChatGPT or even Bing Chat or Copilot as it's called now, it's just way behind and it's way more inaccurate than those. So it just feels like it's just too late, too little, if that makes sense. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one.